On popular demand, I will do something that's not really a dinner today. So we're gonna do pickles. It's my mother's recipe and she got it from her mother. So it's pretty old. It's a German pickling recipe. So it's a little bit different than American dill pickles. And yeah, so what do you need? Let's grab cucumbers. So I've got these from the farmer's market today. And it's not your average dill pickle like you would have in the US. Well, you have them in the US, but it's not the most common used type of cucumber for this. It's a French variety, a little bit along the lines of cornichons. And it's a very thin skinned cucumber. When you look at here, it's a fairly smooth skin. It's very thin. Let me grab a knife here. And when you see, see that you're already through. So it's like nothing. So these are excellent pickled because, well, they're a little bit, let's say more sophisticated. I just think they taste better. So what I'm going to do is we just brush them up. I'm using a little brush for this. You can clean them either any way you want. I just have a little, what do you call those? Mushroom brushes. So what I'm doing is I'm just quickly getting rid of dirt and stuff on those guys. Now I should go grab a bowl for this. So you definitely look at this. This is a perfect example. You see the flower still attached, the blossom. So you definitely want to get rid of the blossom. So the blossom, the bottom of the blossom contains some enzymes that are designed to make cucumbers mushy. So you don't want that. You don't want mushy cukes. So get rid of the, definitely get rid of the flowers that are on the top, if there are any. And then if there's, if there's little stems, get rid of those too. But those I'm not too concerned about. So that's just a matter of preference. Okay, so far so good. Could have tossed that out in the lawn. Okay, so here's my cucumbers. I prepared four jars. I generally use wide mouth jars because it's simply, it's easier to stack in. And then the other thing you need is this. So you got to check out the recipe for the, this is the, the spice mixture. And what I always like to do is, for example, put a dried hot pepper in there. So like a chili, like one of those guys here. That gives it a nice, nice little spice. Okay. So I don't know if I can even fill four jars, but we will see. So what I'm doing is step number one, let's put this aside. Step number one is put cucumbers in the jar. The jars are apparently cleaned, of course. There we go. I should have bought a couple of smaller ones. Nope, this is probably it what I can. Oh, there's a, there's a little one. There we go. Okay, then I put a little bit of dill. And I just stuff that down somewhere on the side. And then I put one spoon of the dill, of the mixture. And you want to make sure 
see those allspice berries here the big the big one you want to make sure you don't have more than one or maybe two of all space spice berries per jar and the same for the juniper berries in there because allspice and juniper berries well, juniper berries i'm not too concerned about but allspice berries generally are pretty spicy so they are pretty overpowering so you don't want to do that so this is the prepared jar we we'll just put that over here and move on to the next one. Okay, we're back here at the stove and I preset things here. So this back here, let me move that out of the way. That's the lids and they're in boiling, almost boiling. I just bring it back up to temperature. You want to keep this at a, at a low simmer, so you almost boiling temperature is fine just to keep those guys uh, sterile, this would be the word to use. For the brine, let's go over to the brine. So I set up the camera right on top of the brine. I'm just using regular distilled vinegar. It does just fine. So the ratio is, let me grab a measuring thing. It's one cup of vinegar. Let's do that. Roughly one cup of vinegar to four cups of filtered water. So I have a filtration system under the sink and four. Okay. So, so much for the basic brine. What you do now is two tablespoons of sugar and four tablespoons of salt. Let me double take five tablespoons of salt. Okay, two tablespoons of sugar per cup of vinegar. So we have one and a half cups, spoons, one and a half cups equals three tablespoons. So it's three tablespoons of sugar and this is just plain white sugar. And then we need seven and a half tablespoons of salt. So five per cup of vinegar, we have one and a half cups. So five times one and a half is seven and a half. Seven and a little bit. Okay, there we go. This is the brine. So we now just bring that to a boil. Uh, most people would use a lot more vinegar and a lot less water. Uh, I think FDA requirements are at like four and a half percent for pickles which is why all American pickles are horribly acidic. Uh, but that's what the FDA figures is needed to keep bacteria out. But to be honest, if you open a jar and the stuff in there bubbles, throw it out, don't eat it. Now, what's about this one? So generally you would do this in a water bath and you would leave them in there for like 20 minutes uh, to bring the closed jar up to a temperature that kills bacteria. Uh, at which point you have, yeah, chunky cucumber soup is what I would call it. So uh, I'm not going to do that. And I never have, I never will. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour boiling water into this bowl, maybe like an inch or two high, just to have the jars um, kind of tempered when, when I hit them with the boiling brine. So I don't want the jars, the, the big temperature difference to might just crack the jars. You don't want to have too much water because then the jars start swimming up. This one's still good. I can do a little more. Yep, not swimming. So I just put these guys in here and this will actually already warm up the glass jars. And that's all I want. So all you do at this point, so we have the cukes stacked in Make sure, you know, when you go with your flat hand that nothing sticks out because, of course, you want to have the lid sealed properly and not, uh, yeah, be lifted by the cucumbers or whatever. So, and now all I do is pour in the brine and make sure it's nice and hot. And what I like to do is I'll pour in until it overflows. 
So I try to overflow the jars and then I'm just trying to keep seeds off the rim. So that we can still get a good seal. And here's the trick. So now you get one of those guys out. And this is the nice thing about this magnet thing. You can lift him out without having to touch him. So I put the ring, the band over it, and I'll have the lid here, and I'm just going to push the lid down. Screw on a band. And that's pretty much it. So at this point, just to show the process, normally I would do all at once, but let's lift it out. So I lift it out, put it on, I usually put it just on some kitchen kitchen towel or something. So this is hot, watch it. So what I'm going to do now is I turn it over. See, see how little air there is? There's virtually no air in it. And once you turn it, you flip it over. Not only do you see if there's a good seal, if there isn't, you know, stuff starts leaking out. So, but at this point, I just turn him upside down and put him aside. So I let him cool upside down. Uh, the trick on this is whatever contamination you had from like reaching in like this or something, you're going to kill that. Potential contamination on the rim of the jar is going to be killed by overflowing with the hot brine. Like so. And then, should you have messed with the inside here for some reason, um, the turning upside down will again sterilize this. Lit. See that? That concludes how to make my mom's pickles. Or let's say, let's put it the other way. It's a classic German dill pickle. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I would be happy if you subscribed if you haven't already. And I'll be back with more cool recipes.